My grandfather came up here with a partner from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they began with a trout farm back in 1926. They did that for two years and found that it wasn't profitable. And fortunately for my grandfather, he had a friend who was with Woolworth, and he got word that they had a product in their store that brought people in off the streets, and it was goldfish. They wanted to put the goldfish in the back. The pet, pet department would end up in the back of the store and everybody would have to come through and there'd be all sorts of impulse buying. There wasn't a producer in the United States that could produce goldfish on a year-round basis. And so his friend with Woolworth challenged him to switch over and raise goldfish. They did it in a heartbeat and we've been doing it for 96 years. My first memory of Ozark fisheries would be coming up to the farm for either two or three weeks in the summertime. My parents wanted me away from the girls, my sisters, and uh, I spent time with my grandparents up here. I would spend, hang out with my grandfather. We'd drive around and look at projects and review how, how things were being done down at the shipping room. And I'd spend a lot of time out on the pond. Growing up on the farm, I remember vividly you know, doing chores and going on projects with my father, helping him with, with whatever it might have been, with maintenance, running errands, picking up parts. I grew up here on the farm, our Missouri farm, and I remember going with my dad and my grandfather out on the ponds. My family started in 1926. Um, I'm a fourth generation fish farm and we started here at this location because of the water. So we're here because of the springs. And then in the uh, 1970s, um, my family bought our biggest competitor uh, which in Indiana, which was Grassy Fork Fisheries. Grassy Fork is one of the oldest privately owned fish farms in America. It started in 1899. And that farm at that time uh, was our biggest competitor. And then we transitioned over and they were both run and operated as Ozark Fisheries. Back in 2011, my brother moved over there and took over Grassy Fork. First job on the farm was doing yard work up at my grandparents' house and I got paid 25 cents an hour. My first job working on the farm was mowing yards. I think I, if I remember correctly, it was, I started when I was about eight or nine, uh, mowing our house, mowing the, the office. My first job on the farm was uh, actually running crawdad traps. So I was in charge of crawdad are, are something you have to actually have a trap for. And we go out and we set traps with bait and then you go back and retrieve the, the crawdads. And so it's something that I got paid like a couple cents a crawdad and I, I would run all these traps and that would be what I would do in the afternoons after, um, after school. And then uh, I transitioned to uh, working in the summertime uh, down in our shipping room. My first fish farmer job was during college when I came here and I lived by myself at my grandparents' house. It was after my grandparents had passed on and I, I came here to see whether this was really something I wanted to do. And I spent a whole summer here, spent a whole summer down in Alabama and a whole summer over in Indiana. Uh, the fish farmer title, uh, in 2011, I left, I left school and came over to um, our Martinsville facility where I where I basically started full-time on, on the farm after, after finishing college. So I always knew I wanted to work with animals. I really love animals growing up. I always thought that would be a vet. Um, and I always thought that maybe I would have a role on the, on the farm. I went to uh, college and my degree was in fisheries and wildlife, but after going to college and coming back and spending a little bit of time away actually puts it all in perspective of when I spent some time in some cities, I knew I didn't, I didn't want to live in the city full time. I knew I wanted to live in the country and I, I knew I still had that love for animals. And luckily I was able to grow up in an environment that, that fostered that. Uh, my family moved here in 1970. Um, my dad was a production manager uh, in 1977. Um, in, in high school growing up, I was a huge sports nut, loved sports, thought I wanted to get into coaching. Started here my freshman year of high school, um, working in the summers, and immediately fell in love with this job. Um, I knew at that time that this is what I wanted to do. I worked under my dad for about 25 years, so I had a lot of practice, and uh, it's just been great ever since. 
We've got employees here that have been part of the family for a long, long time. You know, knowing that, that they're dependent on the business for their, their uh, livelihood, you know, makes it a big responsibility. Working for a family farm like this has, has been a really unique experience that most people don't get to do in a job. Um, I've worked with people here that have been here 40, 50 years and their kids and their fathers, uncles, aunts. And uh, my father worked here 40 years. My wife worked here 10 years. I've been here 37 years. It, it's just been an awesome, it, it's, you've got another work, a work family that's just like your family. Earliest memory of Ozark would be probably when I was about five or six years old, being with my dad who was doing some contract work at the time at our Shireman farm. I mean, I can remember going over the ponds at that point and seeing the fish come to the edge of the water and thinking that was pretty neat. I've worked for a whole lot of corporations and they care about the bottom dollar. And I feel like Ozark is a family and I feel like I'm part of that family. And that means more to me than making what I would make in a whole world. My role at Ozark Fisheries, I'm the production manager. Um, I'm over the overall uh, production of fish which starts from uh, when the fish lay the eggs all the way to the fry stage, putting them out in the nursery ponds, and then uh, their growth over the year, and then all the way to harvest to when they're sold. We guarantee our fish to arrive alive and healthy and in a timely manner, and we rely on third-party carriers to help us to do that. Sometimes that can be challenging. So my first job here at Ozark Fisheries was actually head babysitter. I babysat Joseph and Margaret Cleveland and their sister Meredith. And shortly after that, I started working um, nights in our air freight packing crew and worked summers in our shipping department. My role here at Ozark Fisheries is the sales manager. I serve with a great group of ladies in our sales and marketing team. So when you're talking about technology and sales and shipping and how it's changed, when I first started in the office here, uh, my, first, my only job, really my only priority, was actually printing out invoices and manually faxing them to customers. And um, we've come a long way from there. So uh, when I first started, I didn't have my own PC. I, I, I didn't need one. I was busy at the fax machine all day, but, or the filing cabinet. But we just had a handful of PCs. We had local dial-up internet access. Um, and we actually faxed orders to our Missouri shipping room or Indiana shipping room for, in order for them to process the orders. I would say maybe five years after I was here, I was um, a sales representative at that time and we moved to a more robust version of our accounting system that allowed us to automatically email invoices to customers. We added a fiber optic line to connect our shipping department to the Missouri office, which allowed us to have internet access and we could email orders to Indiana and Missouri now instead of um, faxing them. And flash forward to today, we have our own order processing system in place um, that our sales and shipping department both utilize as well as production. Um, but it gives us um, way more effective means of communicating orders, not only to our shipping department, but to our customers. Farms are ever-changing. A lot of things have changed even since when I was a little girl to now uh, since I've been back for four or five years. We've implemented a lot of technology on the farm since I started, which is you know, about 12, 12 years ago. So, And I try to, to stay out in front of, of that, knowing that you know, this in the world that we live in today that we need need the technology or have to implement the technology to be able to, to survive. We've really worked to get ourselves, uh, have, have a really good website that we can, our customers can order through our website as opposed to having to take all orders over the phone. Being able to process those orders in a more efficient manner, um, so having technology uh, and resources that we can, you know, use instead of paper, everything's on an iPad now. And so we're able to, to take the technology, especially uh, technology that's being used in other different industries and apply it to aquaculture and apply it to our situation. I feel like in farming it's a little bit behind and adapting and wanting to learn but we're at my brother and I the fourth generation are really working to infuse some technology into the farm and wherever we can. 
The biggest shift that's occurred over the last 10 years has been in favor of e-commerce. And I would say that, that uh, Ozark Fisheries has been right in front as far as providing goldfish and koi and, and rosy red uh, feeders to the market. And we've done it through our work with Amazon and with Shopify and eBay. The, the challenge to make that happen is the technology. And we've invested quite a bit of money in technology and in, in, in software programs that allow us to be able to, to handle all the, the volume of transactions that you got to have when you're doing business on a business to consumer basis. Every week we're bringing new fish into our shipping room. So uh, we have the fish, when the fish are ready in the ponds, we're gonna harvest them out of the ponds, either by staining or draining that pond. And then we're going to bring those fish into our shipping room. Those fish are gonna be processed. Um, sometimes the waters are gonna have to be acclimated. So if they're on warm water in the pond, they have to be acclimated down to spring water. Then we're going to go through and do a health check on those fish as well as a check on um, if the, the, a quality check to make sure that they're the right color and the right shape that we, that we want. And then those fish are shipped out throughout the rest of the week. Well, we've got excess land here. My grandfather in the early days bought a lot of land and with that land, he wanted to create an opportunity to, to basically control the watershed down into these bottoms where we have our ponds. And when he did that, um, he created land that, that was you know, open and clear and he bought lots of neighboring farms. Here in Missouri, we've got 7,000 acres. And so just to be fish farming on 500 to 750 acres and not utilizing the other land, we, you know, the decision was made back in the 50s to start running beef cattle and uh, basically to get a return on the, the excess land. The, the idea of controlling the watershed, uh, we found out later that really the springs that we've got here, we've got six large springs, they, uh, they get their water recharged 50, 60 miles away from here. And so there was no, no, there was really not an opportunity to be able to control that amount of watershed. So it was sort of a fallacy in the early days. We started this farm about 20 years ago was kind of known for its black baldies, its F1 baldies, and um, we kind of took it a little bit different direction and we've gone to uh, basically 100% black hided cattle, uh, no whites in the face at all, and um, we're, we're pretty proud of them. We don't, we don't uh, toot or horn a whole lot. We kind of let the cattle speak for themselves at the sales and everything, but uh, this, is, this is probably one of the better commercial cattle operations in the state of Missouri. I, I mean, you have to class, classify it that way. Our cattle usually sell in the top 1% at the sales that we sell at. My role here at the farm is I pretty much try to take care of everything that involves the cattle operation on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's working cattle, sorting cattle, moving cattle, all the fence work, um, identifying pastures that maybe need work done on them, uh, implementing new ground that we're going to doze, clean up, pond work, just everything that, that is involved in a, in a Missouri cattle operation, that's what I am in charge of, and that's what I try to take care of. The uh, Circle F Cattle Company originated from Ozark Fisheries on the fish side was started first and then roughly 30 years after uh, the cattle company was started and so they simply took the O from the Ozark Fisheries and just put it around the F to make the Circle F brand for Circle F Cattle Company. I try to stray away from the fish side, that's not my forte, but I, uh, it's, you know, you'd be amazed at how even though you think fish in a pond and cattle in a pasture, how closely those two are related. Because um, how good the fish are and how good the cattle are directly relates to how good the water quality is and how good the pasture quality is. So both of those are, are extremely correlated. Fish side is roughly, roughly 500 acres encompassing the farm in water. Most of it's fenced off. We can pasture it in rough drought years if we want to, to access the spring water and stuff. But most of the time we try to keep the cattle away from the fish uh, just simply for, you know, whenever cattle walk on the pond dams and stuff, erosion on the dams, it's just not, it's a little counterproductive. You can do more damage than you do good. By, we, we get to steal some fish guys for help every once in a while, and uh, sometimes we try to help them. It may not be correlated quite so well because we don't know what we're doing, but we try if we can. The biggest challenge for us right now is our succession planning. And with a fourth generation in place, we feel very good about it. We've, I've got my son and one of my two daughters that are both involved in the business, one in Indiana and one in Missouri. The biggest, 
the even bigger challenge is going to be the third generation staying out of the way of the fourth generation.